controls, data, et cetera, would be sitting in your, some of the plugins are installed. And then you have a document object model. That's the rendering engine. Uh, that's the piece where we are attacking uh, over here. And then you have uh, components which are coming from the application like AJAX, Flash, Silverlight, HTML, DOM, UI logic, et cetera. So that get loaded in the browser and then you start uh, working back and forth. So this is a very over, higher level overview of the a browser architecture, and that it differs from uh, from uh, browser to browser. So I would have a different architecture than a than a Chrome. So that's uh, something where we are looking at. And when DOM calls happen, HTML will use a JS and call uh, XHR object. XHR object will make an asynchronous call. This is a fundamental difference between a 1.0 and a 2.0 because in a 2.0 you can make a asynchronous call. So it will wait for the callback. When callbacks comes. Uh, it'll load the image or whatever you have asked for, whatever new data you have come is, is, is getting loaded in the browser. So we'll go to the web server, web server will make a call to XML, middleware, text, et cetera, et cetera retrieved uh, data resource and then the whole thing will go back. So this is a very simple way how AJAX, Flash or Silverlight is going to make a call, asynchronous call from browser to the server. Uh, this is a second important piece of information. We have like a one information where we, are, we, are, we have one single DOM application. The second important part is there are various different structures out there in a, in a 2.0 application. So you can use JSON, you can use JS script, JS object, XML, JSRA, AMF, uh, uh, Microsoft remoting, uh, serialization, et cetera. So once, once application or a DOM has a direct access to the socket level through X, XHR, pretty much anything can be, can be sent back, back and forth. So in 1.0, our, our, our transaction from browser to server was a name value pair. So we send either in a query string or a post buffer, we send a new name value pair, say first name Shriraj, ampersand, Shri, last name Shah, or something like that. Over here, we can, we can do a transaction in various different uh, formats. So this is where you have a DOM get loaded and then uh, once a DOM is loaded, it'll make a call, uh, get the JSON stream, JSON stream comes and it'll inject uh, that particular new values into the DOM, wherever he wants to paste that value into the DOM. Uh, so one of the important part or while doing the assessment, one of the part is how do you, how do you identify these DOM calls? How do you crawl these DOM calls or uh, identify these DOM calls? So for example, over here, a very simple application uh, we have. So for example, if I go to this particular site, say demo slash crawl. Now you can see as soon as I go to the site, it is making a XHR call and grabbing these links which you can see over here. So that's the way how the application is working. Now if you look at the source of the page, over here you can't see any links because it's on, if you, if you try to interact on the protocol layer, it's going to fail. You have to take whatever content coming and then load that content into the DOM. Once you give a context to the, to the content, then and then th things uh, will start pop up. So over here, for example, it is saying, okay, uh, get master.js, get dojo.js, get RSS, RSS XML parser.js, get XML, XML HTTP request.js, and then make a function called load HTML. So load HTML will be somewhere in the JavaScript and then there are some areas defined in a DOM, say main area and a my area, and then uh, things will come and start getting loaded in the browser. So now this is a one page application. So you don't have anything else. This is a page, this is a code which comes and loaded in the browser and then become a, all of a sudden your thin client will become a thick client because it's going to make a DOM based calls back and forth. So then pretty much you start clicking all the links and new functions will keep on popping up over here and new things will come over here. So there is no refresh, no reload, everything is happening in the DOM via APIs. Uh, so if, say for example, you try to crawl this site, how do you crawl the site? Because if you open a socket connection and try to crawl, it's not going to work. So here is like, there are drivers out there by which you say, okay, uh, programmatically you drive IE or programmatically you drive uh, Firefox or such. So here is a little a Ruby script which say, okay, uh, it's something called Wattir. Wattir is a, is a driver for, uh, for IE. You say, okay, load this uh, link and then start clicking the links. So this will essentially what it's going to do is it will open an IE over here and then uh, control IE from the script and start clicking these links. And you can see we are extracting these uh, Java scripts or, or calls from browser. Okay, so we introduced the first tool called DOM scan. Uh, so this tool is essentially going to uh, going to use uh, going to drive IE for us and uh, going to go ahead and uh, do this. So this is a tool, a simple DOM scan utility over here. So what we have over here is 
Uh, this is a DOM scan where you define which URL you want to load, and at the back end you can see IE, which is which is controlling, which is controlled by DOM scan. So DOM scan has started this particular IE instance over here, and then you say, okay, I want to go to this particular site, be it a Yahoo, Google, wherever you want to go. You say, okay, go and grab this site. So now this site is going to get loaded in the browser, as you can see, and all the links and everything which is uh, from the DOM is going to get extracted over here. So over here you can see the extraction of the DOM over here, all the links. Here you can see the whole active DOM tree. Here is your HTML page and then you can see, uh, you can actually control everything from here. So if I say, okay, click this particular link, the DOM of the page is going to change uh, in the browser. So that's how it's going to control the whole interface. So now we are controlling from the tool, what we are doing is we are controlling the actual contacts of the DOM. So that's the first objective we want to do for the assessment that if we come across these kind of a 2.0 sites, we should have a tools to do so. And then we can see all the JavaScripts over here that how JavaScript is implemented for this particular DOM. And we come to the DOM scan next. So this is how the first hurdle which we can cross where say, okay, if it's a DOM driven site, we are now control on the IE and we can control the, the whole thing. Uh, so attack surface which is coming is like if you take the, the client side attack surface in a browser, you have AJAX, RIA, HTML, JS, DOM, etc. And then on a server side, you have query string, post name, XML, JSON, etc. So these are the typical, uh, typical attack surface on a server in a client side. Definitely we are going to focus on DOM calls and events, uh, but still there is an implication of a DOM calls to the backend XML and JSON. So we have to, we have to, we, I will be focusing on this particular section here and this particular section over here. Else like there are some components which uh, deal with the feeds and other party uh, information over here as well. So this is our attack surface which we are looking at. Okay. Moving to the DOM hacking now. So uh, in nutshell what we have is like a, now we have an application running AJAX RIA flash. It's a single DOM application so when you go to the slash page the DOM is getting loaded, your HTML page or JavaScript will get loaded. That's number one. And number two, what we have is a various different structures which, which are communicating with the browser and a server, be it a JSON, XML, etc. So that's the two uh, pieces of information which we have. Uh, so now DOM-based hacking, uh, what we have is a, a one attack is a DOM-based XSS, uh, DOM-based request response variable stealing. I will explain that, what, what I mean by variable stealing. Uh, then we have a flash and a DOM access, so it's a cross technology stuff which you can do. Say, for example, you get access to the DOM, and that particular DOM has a flash file running, so you start retrieving information from the flash. Uh, feeds and mashup, uh, CSRF with JSON, XML, AMF, etc. And then some interesting st uh, concept which I want to discuss on DOM reverse engineering. So these are the attacks which we are going to look at one after another now. Uh, so first, uh, DOM based XSS. Uh, it is essentially a sleeping giant. You take any AJAX application and understand it well. Uh, look at all the calls, all document dot calls, all eval calls, and uh, I'm 100% sure that you will end up finding some area where you can in, uh, start injecting DOM-based uh, cross-site scripting, or you start interest, uh, injecting this uh, these attack vectors. Now, what is the root cause of DOM-based cross-site scripting? Uh, the first is DOM is already loaded. So when you load the page, you have a DOM which is now already loaded in your memory. So the whole application is now on the browser side is going to run from the memory. Uh, now, application is essentially a single page or a single DOM. So say for example, from the point you, you go to the slash till the point you move out from the site, the DOM is going to remain the same. So whatever your activity you are doing on the 2.0 application are going to happen on that particular same DOM. So when you make a call, what is going to happen is it will say it will make a backend call. It will grab information, say JSON, HTML, name, value, pair, whatever is coming back. And now this, you have the memory here where the DOM is loaded, and whatever is on DOM you can see in the browser. Now this new information has come to you. You have to somehow inject that particular new information into current uh, currently existing DOM because this is not a refresh and reload where the entire DOM is going to get reloaded. So what you're going to do is you make an eval call. For example, eval call is where you say, okay, this is a new information. I want to pass that new information to my, my existing DOM. So I say, okay, eval this. So that eval will actually put all the new content into, into the existing DOM or a memory. So 
this is one of the problem where this new information which is coming is maybe coming from untrusted sources. It's no longer coming from your own sources. It's not coming from your databases. So you don't know what is lying there and then you eval that stuff or you do a document or dot write calls on them and that will cause a DOM based cross site scripting. So this is a fundamental uh, root cause when you dissect uh, DOM based XSS and try to see root cause one of the root causes would fall into uh, these four categories. Uh, so various different way uh, DOM based XSS can happen. Uh, there is multiple way DOM based XSS can happen. We'll look at the three cat three uh, categories over here. Uh, one is a simple DOM function using URL process or AJAX call. Uh, second is a third party content going into the existing DOM or third would be AJAX call where we uh, remove the DOM call and directly make a call to the back end. So these are the three different ways uh, DOM based XSS can happen. So the first say for example you have a uh, DOM based URL parsing. So now what you have is your, your DOM is already loaded and you want to pass on the links uh, to different people. So you say okay ID equal to 1, ID equal to 2, ID equal to 3, etc. That will actually, that particular parameter is no longer gen going to the get request and fetch new response for you. What is going to happen is that parameter will go to the DOM, DOM will take the parameter, make a AJAX call, grab information from the back end and publish on your, uh, on your browser. So what you are looking at is you are taking information from the URL. So you say okay windows location search substring or something like that where you are saying when you, when you start analyzing your JavaScript code these are the calls which you start looking out. Say for example whether I am extracting information from windows location or not. And then that particular value will traverse across few variables and going to hit to uh, one of the eval call. As soon as it hits the eval call that is the point which you get where uh, DOM based cross site scripting is possible. So for example if we do a DOM scan. Okay, so we have this, this particular site here which is a catalog.aspx page. We are sitting on this. It is a completely 2.0 page over here. So all the links are essentially a 2.0. So we say okay scan my DOM. So we say okay look show me all eval calls. So it will show you all eval calls over here. So we say okay this is a list of eval calls. Now what we have done over here is we took the first eval call and tried to trace that uh, in, in my DOM that this particular call is coming and going from where. So the first line which we found the eval call is say some product function, say product then uh, coco string coming. So now we are interested from where the, the coco coming. So we go there and trace and then we say okay line number 30 uh, there is a file called current DOM, file name is a current DOM and then there is a something a function called query st and then there is a string which is a PID. So essentially a PID string where uh, we are doing some kind of a operation or a search. So then we start traversing into this, uh, this whole thing. So we say okay from where this particular call is coming and going. So it, it may take one or two or three or four iteration depending on how the implementation is done. So now some business logic or some kind of a logic is happening and at the end it is going to FT and from FT to it is going to somewhere else over here. So it is going to the uh, GY where the split is actually happening and now we go to the HU parameter which say okay now show me the where is the HU parameter in my DOM. So it say okay this is a parameter where it is doing a, some kind of a search substring. So now we know that there is a PID parameter which is taking from the URL and it is hitting to the, uh, to the eval call. So we say okay PID equal to 1 we can pass now this is going to a DOM and making a back end call uh, to the XHR and changing information. So if I do 1 to 2 you can see the image will change over here. DOM is not the whole page is not getting refreshed and reloaded just that particular piece of information which is changing here. So now instead of a PID 2 now I know that this 2 the value 2 which is actually going here uh, in, the, in the function called co quote to string and this is a structure of that particular call. So I say okay put a over here what we have done is we, we go ahead and put 2 and then close the bracket and we say okay we, uh, we got an eval position here. So we, uh, we uh, put a semicolon and comment out rest of the JavaScript since this page is going to run this JavaScript we just remove that and now you can see we can actually go ahead and change the values or change the DOM calls over here. So now we got the point this is a place where we can start playing around here. So instead of 3, if we, instead of a 2, if we do a 3, you can see we are looking at the third product now. So all this is happening in the, in the DOM. Now we start injecting our script here. So we say okay alert document dot cookie or whatever malicious script you want.